This is The Weekly Set, the official podcast of TVEnthusiast.com. With your host, Tyson Gifford and William Rowe. Episode 125, recorded September 14th, 2017. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of TVEnthusiast.com. I'm your host, the editor-in-chief of TV Enthusiast. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here, fellow TVE writer, William Rowrig. Hello. Today, we are going to be talking about The Defenders, the new Netflix Marvel series that finally paid off all of the shows that we've developed up to this point. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Now we have the one that brings them all together. And we're going to talk about kind of our thoughts about it. We're going to go over kind of a little bit of like how they they built the story for this and uh, talk about the state of the Marvel Netflix universe and what we kind of expect to see coming after this. So let's start things off. Let's talk about Danny's journey because that's kind of like how the show starts. The show starts with Danny's journey. Of course, this is following up on what happened in Iron Fist, which was kind of like the mess of the Marvel Netflix universe. (laughs) Oh, yeah, right. So Iron Fist was not received well at all. Uh, if you listen to our podcast on it, you can hear kind of our reactions. We had Ed on that podcast I as well. only watched three episodes, I think. Ed tapped out after the first episode, I believe. If I'm remembering yeah. that podcast correctly. Yeah, like, it was just boring. The biggest sin you could commit when, you know, you're, you're doing like entertainment is to just be boring. Like, yeah. like it, it wasn't funny bad. Like, like the room, you know, it wasn't like, and you know, it, it was, it wasn't like, it wasn't like this is bad, but there's some entertaining parts. Like the flash. Like the, <laughs> like the flash. Yeah. Like the flash can be terrible, but it, it, it it's entertaining while it, while it, while it bees awful. Most most of the time, at least. So, you know, I put up with it. <laughs> but, but this, this isn't, this, this was just boring. It was like, it was plotting and meandering and not, and the characters themselves are boring. Danny Rand is easily the most boring person in the MC, boring hero in the MCU. He's like, he has like zero personality. And it's just like, I, I, I mean, I don't know, like, Theoretically, that's a cool character. That's that's an awesome character. He, he's this dude. He got he got stranded in the Himalayas, and then he got like taken in by monks, raised by them, learned like some awesome you know kung super powered kung fu, and you know then he moves back to New York City and he fights crime. That should be like that should be full of awesome, full of action, you know. And it just so <laughs> I, I think that's I, not even the problem necessarily that side. I think the problem is that as a character, he has like no personality right in the comics isn't danny rand supposed to be he's supposed to be a little bit peter parker he's supposed to be pretty quippy and and funny yeah, he's you supposed know to be kind of kind of a smart ass yeah and he's, so he's like, not a smart ass at all in this he's like always super serious about everything there's there's nothing smart you can attach to danny rand <laughs> <laughs> no word with smart in it can be added to danny rand <laughs> <laughs> he's like a stunted child so I don't know what, so like I kind of came, I, I started Defenders not really knowing what happened in Iron Fist because that's 13 episodes and I, if I want to tap out after like the third episode, like I'm not going to sit there and like torture myself for 10 more episodes in the hopes that this might get good. Uh, and, and, you know, I read enough impressions. I read enough. I've, I've heard enough opinions to know that it, it doesn't get good from that point. So, <laughs> so yeah. you know, I wasn't going to bother. So I kind of came at least the D- Danny Rand story line. I, I came into it ignorant of, but you know what? It's, it's written in such a way that you don't really even need to know what happened in Iron Fist to, yeah. to like understand what's going on it because the Danny Rand there, part. There isn't a lot of plot in the Defenders overall, I think. It really is just kind of like characters coming together and then like, let's resolve this like plot lines that were set up before and stuff. Like there isn't a lot of like plot development in the series as a whole, which means that you don't really yeah need to know too terribly much to just kind of go in and watch it. Not really. I think, I think the most you uh, need to watch to prepare for this is Daredevil season two, because that gives all, all the context for like the hand 
and yeah. and Electra, and you know those become like major major plot points. You know, if you don't know who Electra is before watching this, like a lot of that impact is going to be completely lost on you. Mm-hmm. So I would say I would say Daredevil season two is mandatory. Um, other than that, nothing else is really mandatory. Um, there, you know, they do touch upon Jessica Jones and Luke Cage's relationship. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, but not not. It's kind of a side plot thing or something. Yeah, it's but it's a side really... pl- it's a side plot thing. It's not really important. I mean, the only thing you need to know is like they they already met and they already have a prior relationship, which is pretty obvious obvious from watching the defenders like so jessica's relationship with luke is completely self-contained in jessica jones it's not even at all it's not even all brought up in this cage so i'd say jessica jones is essential viewing but not for this i just think it's essential viewing because i think it's the well, best it's, like a, it's a good show so, <laughs> so 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 you you would think iron fist would be essential viewing because again iron fist does play a large role like a huge, for the, I for, think for the plot, for the it plot and defenders, it does at least, and you know, but again, it's it's all explained and understandable within the context of this one show without even having to watch Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd, again, I'd say, like if, if 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 you felt like you were missing some details of like how the hand is structured and stuff, you might need to watch iron fist to get that you know but i don't think right. you really have to because it's kind of pretty ex- well explained just in defenders by right. itself so I, th- I think i i think you know so so i at no point watching the, the defenders did i feel lost because i didn't bother to watch iron fist like i mm-hmm. i just i understood everything perfectly well and there wasn't like any pieces i felt i was missing where i felt like wait a minute i should go back and watch iron fist like <laughs> that, that thought never occurred to me <laughs> <laughs> you know so back to back to Danny's journey like in the defenders that's how the series begins it begins with uh Danny and Colleen and they're chasing somebody down a mysterious woman and a, a member of the hand a member of the hand and uh she's like totally badass she's like kicking this guy's ass there's she's fighting some guy and and you know and you can tell like this guy is is obviously like really skilled fighter you know he's got the moves down but she is completely completely this mystery woman is completely outclassing him and she ends up defeating him and just as uh danny and colleen reach this guy and and she takes off they they fight her kind of unsuccessfully she she yeah. gets away so they're you know they they're they're like should we go after her or should we try to like save this guy and get information they try to save the guy doesn't really get them anything they they ju- they're just kind of like oh shit there's this lady we have to be cautious of this kind of skilled his story kind of, as it continues on, he gets involved trying to kind of like find pieces of the hand, like that are in Rand Enterprises and everything else. So he he's getting involved in this side of stuff and looking up, finding, looking traces of the hand. That's kind of what Danny's doing at the beginning right. of the series. Moving on from there, we go to like kind of Jessica Jones story. So Jessica Jones gets approached by a family. They're looking for the husband, father of this family, the patriarch of the family. And uh, he went missing. Jessica just kind of like rudely implies that, you know, well, he's cheating on you, you know, just deal with it, whatever, you know, in Jessica's typical rude way. But she's seen kind of like how damaged it's making this family. So she kind of gets feels like she's pressured into like doing something. So she starts to investigate. But in doing so, it, it's things start looking a little bit darker. Well, you know, well, well, no, she was going to dr- she was going to drop this completely, except she doesn't start investigating this until mm-hmm. until like because after after she, after the family leaves, after she tells them to basically fuck off, she immediately gets a mysterious phone call from some Somebody says, don't investigate this. And that's what really, that, that's what makes her start investigating it because she's like, well, that was fucking weird. Okay. Now I am going to investigate this. <laughs> you know, Jessica Jones is just a contrarian. You can get her to do anything you want just by telling her not to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't fall in love with me. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Hearts of flutter all around you, sir. That, that, that's, that's, um. <laughs> that's why Purple Man's mind control didn't work on her because she was telling her to do things and she's a contrarian so she won't do them. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but Jessica ends up investigating it. Uh, she, the guy's kind of that she's looking for is like alive, but he's like trying to dismiss her from investigating it and trying to stop her from investigating it. She checks out his apartment and ends up finding Electra and ends up fighting Electra, the same woman that, that, uh, Danny fought in it. Yeah. Again. And as, as Electra's approaching the guy trying to like abduct him or something, he ends up killing himself. And he's, he's like, you can't have what's in my, my mind or something. And he shoots himself. So Jessica fi- is fighting Electra. She's like, what the fuck is up with this lady? That's why is she so good? She ends up going to get, getting arrested. She's, uh, uh, cause they, they find the apartment with all the explosives. This happened actually earlier, I believe, than what I was talking about. But <laughs> she, she's, uh, and that's how she gets tied in with like Misty Knight and everything like that. And that leads to her eventual encounter with Matt. And this is Matt's journey. Matt's journey kind of begins with him, Matthew Murdoch's, with him kind of just feeling bad about the th- situation with Electra. And he's, you know, visiting his priest friend and kind of confessing and trying to weigh through his guilt and his feelings about everything. And then he gets tied into things. It looks when like he, he's really trying hard to not be Daredevil anymore. Yeah. He gets, he gets put on a case by, by Foggy who passes him on a case to, to represent Jessica. Uh, um, who's arrested and and starts getting involved in the plot. But we won't go too much further on that because we're going to talk about how everybody comes together later. Yeah. Um, then you have Luke's story. Luke gets out of prison. He's going back to Harlem. He, he kind of wants to, you know, initially I think he just kind of wants to start rebuilding his life and stuff, but he quickly gets gets pulled back into the, you know, being the hero of Harlem. Well, and, yeah, and he gets pulled back in because he basically gets swept up and, like, he finds out that, that young that young teenager and Harlem are being recruited to do some shady shady work and that they typically end up and that they're ending up dead you know Mm -hmm. and you know he 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 comes across you know learn learns this one family who who the mother already lost the son to this and the other son's getting involved and he kind of makes a personal mission to 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 save this kid from this fate and to find out what's going on with this Mm-hmm. And that's how he get. That's how Luke Cage gets sucked in because turns out this stuff is all related to the hand. Uh so and and the stuff that you know Danny Rand and Jessica Jones it, are in, already investigating. Mm-hmm. And Matt's now involved in just by representing Matt. Jessica. Yeah, exactly. So um, before we get into kind of like how everybody comes together, I say one of the best things that this series did was its use of color and lighting to differentiate the characters. Right. So like totally. every kind of character had like a color scheme and the way things are lit. And even when the characters come together, it's like it's like part of the room will be lit in one color and part will be lit in another. But it's like subtle. Well, it's you not know. too obvious. Well, you know, the, you can see it because because they uh, they establish they establish it in the opening credits you know mm-hmm. you can see everybody everybody's got their you know they they show image you know they show artwork of the characters with their own color scheme you know Daredevil is red Luke Cage is yellow Jessica Jones is blue Iron Fist is green and so that's that's established right away and and then you know that they then they use that within the episodes through through the lighting and other and other means. Yeah, it's also in the the way it's edited. Like when they cut from one character to another, yeah. one of the main characters to another. Like they they go through like a at least in the beginning they have like a little transitional kind of cut to it, and you can see that as the colors change through that when it mm. when it shifts back over to another character. It's it's really interesting. It's really smart. It's probably the best thing the entire series did. <laughs> honestly um it's really cool and, for sure yeah and 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 it, it it's really deeply ingrained in there too because it's not just like i said it's not just like when you're on that character because these characters eventually come together when they come together you can if you look closely you can see that it's still the colors are still divided it's just a bit more subtle in the way that it happens which is just really kind of interesting to to watch through how that's connected. But that leads us into the team dynamic. And as these characters start getting together, we had mentioned with Danny's journey, 
that he uh, um, was kind of looking down any traces of the hand. And we know in Luke's journey, he's kind of looking for these kids that are being used um, from the ghetto. They're being recruited into this organization to do some kind of cleanup work or something. And those two end up colliding fairly early in when, you know, uh, uh, they end up kind of at the same place. Iron Fist, you know, Danny is kind of going after trying to like fight these kids and take them and ask questions from them. Danny's there to try to protect these kids and get them out of this bad situation. So that puts Danny and Luke in diametrically opposed positions. Right. So exactly. they, they have a fight. It's, it's kind of, and, and it plays, shows both their kind of strengths because it starts off with Danny's like, you know, trying to do all his quick martial arts on Luke and Luke's just sitting there like not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Just soaking everything, just kind of like sitting there looking at him like, okay, are you done yet? And yeah, right. he's kind of making a fool out of Danny. And then Danny ends up finally coming back by using his iron fist on Luke and kind of shocking Luke about, you know, being able to, to damage him like that. So the two of them now they're they they've kind of had a pretty cool fight, fight, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty funny to watch. It's mostly for like Luke's perspective of just kind of like sitting there soaking all of (laughs) all Danny's damage. Yeah, it's like like, it's just particularly fun for Luke's perspective when you know he 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 is knocked for a loop eventually when Danny Rand powers up his iron fist. Like you can tell, he is super surprised by that. It's just like what the. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. So they have this fight. They're both kind of walk away from it a bit bitter um, and annoyed at each other. And then, um, then when Luke is talking to Claire about like this guy he fought and had this like glowing fist and stuff, you know, Claire having been in all four of these series and having, you know, been in, in Iron Fist and knowing Danny exactly Rand and knowing about the Iron Fist. About. She knows exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. So she sets up a meet between them, which is funny because you see them kind of like sitting like, you know, especially Danny sitting like being like very like stubborn. <laughs> like, they're like you know, Colleen and Claire are like, come on, let's get together and talk. We're on the same side here. And like Luke and like <laughs> Danny are like little kids going like, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't like him. And uh, right. so that's kind of how those two initially come together and um, they're, how they're not kind of really gelling with each other <laughs> because they're both like kind of stubborn and you know they have this fight between them that wasn't really resolved um on the other side we already mentioned that matt ended up working for jessica jones uh as as her attorney and got her out of custody um this kind of gets jessica a little bit more interested in him and she ends up kind of following him and sees him kind of like doing things he shouldn't be able to do as a blind man and he's kind of escaping her like the little ninja he is and so now Jessica's kind of intrigued by him. He's kind of intrigued by her because he's trying to stop her from getting involved in this and she just keeps getting involved more. All four of these come together though when Danny finally decides, you know what, I'm going to use like kind of the might of my position as a Rand, not as the Iron Fist, but as like... Well, Colleen a- kind of gives him that idea, right? He doesn't yeah. come up with that on his own. You know, he, he's like really... Fo- he, he's like- it kind of came from actually Luke, I think, because Luke was the one that oh, talks that's to him right, and said, Luke uh, gave him that speech about how you about know, privilege and yeah about privilege yeah that's true it kind of does come from you know which he didn't really take kindly to that you know it's like you know he, he he's kind of like who are you to lecture me what the you know and then Colleen helps him <laughs> see because he's he's kind of myopically focused on being the Iron Fist and literally using his fist to beat the bad guys like so much so he he doesn't realize that he's the CEO of a corporation or that that that's helpful in any way to him or his mission, you know. Yeah. Well, not the CEO. He, he's the short majority shareholder. <laughs> that's true. The majority what, majority shareholder. Uh, that's yeah, true. He, he wouldn't make a good CEO. <laughs> Don't be funny. He's never he's never at work. So nobody <laughs> would tank in a day. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, he barely he barely acknowledges it exists un, until it's convenient to him. So yeah. <laughs> so he. he he ends up storming the building, you know, in, in a corporate way, not like, not as the Iron Fist, you know, going through, going into like the boardroom to talk to him and basically lay down a uh, um, ultimatum to them, knowing that it's the hand. Um, 
So he's going and doing that. The building that he's going to do this at, that that the hand controls, that he ends up getting this information because of his work. He has a secretary kind of look into um, how how money was being moved around when the hand was operating out of Rand. And the building that he goes to is the same one that we saw um, Electra and Daredevil in 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 season two of Daredevil. Right. So this is this is on top of the location where that giant pit was. Um, so, but they don't know this yet, really. <laughs> but, uh, so Danny Rand's kind of storming there. He, he, he kind of came in with the smart move of doing it as a, in a corporate position and then kind of like ran out of ideas after that. <laughs> and right. just basically starts throwing around that he's the iron fist and that he'll take them down and stuff and threatening them. And they're like, okay, that's great. Well, now we'll just like kill you, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, that's when a fight ensues. Um, uh, I, I think Luke Cage kind of quickly comes into the fight too. I can't remember exactly how he came to be at the building. Um, but he ended up being involved there as well. He got involved in the fight. At the same time, um, Jessica's going into the building. And when she's doing that, Matt kind of tries to stop her going like, what are you doing? And so he gets involved because of that. So now like all four of them are in there. They end up in an epic hallway fight scene. Yeah. Cause every, every Marvel Netflix series has to have a hallway fight scene. <laughs> and so they do this big it's one with all four. Now. Of them. <laughs> yeah. They do a big one with all four. Problem. Which is kind of fun because you kind of see like the way that their abilities kind of work with each other. Like I liked like Danny hiding behind like Luke. So like yeah. Luke was taking hits and then Danny would like pop well, out. You, you see somebody. like whenever somebody comes out with guns, Luke gets in front of everybody and takes the bullets. <laughs> and then yeah, and then uh, uh, and a scrappy, and then Daredevil's like the skilled fighter. You know, I guess you'd say Danny is, but he kind of doesn't know what he's doing really that much. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave that to Daredevil, but they're yeah. <laughs> they get in this fight. They end up taking the elevator down together. Um, it's funny that uh, uh, um, Matt's wearing Jessica's scarf over his head. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and, and she's constantly Jessica's always like throughout the series. She takes like snide comments at like Matt and like his choice of attire first for like his yeah. scarf. You know, you know she's always busting his balls. Easy. He, you know, he's trying to protect his identity, and she looks at that as being completely pointless. She, she's like, it's a fun pairing. Yeah. It's a fun pairing too because, um, because she's she's like street smart and stuff like that and everything. But um, Matt's not stupid, but he's kind of like you know he's got kind of got like a little bit of that naivete that like um I guess like Danny has too or something where he'll kind of like he'll try to say something kind of nice and, and and then like she'll just go like she or like Luke Cage will be like you know like they had the great scene where Luke's like I'm not gonna hug you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just see him like, like, oh, I know. <laughs> Like, I was just trying to have a moment here, and you just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But, yeah, so that's how they come together. They end up kind of staying at a Chinese restaurant <laughs> uh, that, like, um, uh, Danny Rang kind of takes over, uh, thanks to his uh, his millions. Thanks to his money. Yeah. His real special ability is money. Uh, and they end up kind of having, like, a conversation, trying to figure things out. Jessica kind of just doesn't want to really be involved and everything um danny's like hey we could be the super best friends you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> well nobody that's no like i don't want to be a vigilante anymore but it's calling me and you know and luke's like i just want to help kids i don't care about any of this other shit yeah and jessica's like you know what i was just trying to find this guy for for this family uh, he, he killed himself so like i have i have no more skin in this i'm out yeah so they try to do all that you know stick kind Comes, he shows up, kind of explains the situation. This this creates kind of an incentive for for Matt to decide like that he is involved because the hand comes up, right? And and it ends up being tied to the hand. And this is something that he and Danny have in common that they really understand the hand and what this means. Um, Claire also understands that so she's kind of invested in that. Um, Colleen Wing as well. Uh, so you kind of start having that, but like Luke and Jessica still kind of aren't that involved in everything that's going on with that. So let's tr 
transition then. Let's talk about the hand. Yes. Because the, the hand has five leaders. As well, we know, that's, that's, that's what makes the, the fest. Hand. Yes. Five and, uh, they're immortal, apparently. They're, they're led by Alexandra Reed, who we, we meet early in the series as just this woman who's like dying. Right. She's got like cancer. And so you just kind of see her from that perspective as this like wealthy, powerful woman that's dying. And then you start to kind of see these connections she has with these other people that we've seen before, like Madame Gao, um, who we, we find out like, oh, okay, well, we, we knew in advance, of course, but <laughs> now we, we kind of like, that's how you kind of put together that she's the member of this organization, that she's kind of like the thumb of the hand, I guess, the, the lead finger. Um and you see kind of like these other members of the hand and you kind of get perspective of who they are. We meet uh, Murakami, who's probably my favorite member of the hand. Um, I just kind of liked the way that he'd be like, like cleaning like a hunt and just be casually talking about that or the way he just like only talks in Japanese. Yeah. Right. I love this guy. <laughs> this guy he clearly is- understands yeah. English, you know, like he just only talks in Japanese and his yeah. kind of calm demeanor That's about cool because uh, Alexandra understands Japanese, so they don't have trouble communicating. Communicating. Yeah, they all they all do, and and so yeah. he, but he, so they they'll respond to him in English, and he's just speaking in Japanese, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of like that. I like I like the way that it, it's kind of reminded me, like when he was like 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 prepping that the animal he he hunted. It yes. kind of reminded me of the first time we saw Tywin in in um, Game of Thrones. Oh right. Where, where, you, where you see like Jamie approach him, and he's like skinning a deer. Right. Totally. Like. Totally. Totally. If you want to introduce somebody as being a cold, calculating badass, uh, just show them having freshly killed an animal. <laughs> <laughs> so we also know um, Madame Gao, who who we'd seen all the way since Daredevil season one. Oh yeah, she's um, she's been around the, the block already. Like if if you've watched any of these show, no, I shouldn't say any. if you watch Daredevil, she should be familiar to you. Yeah, and then you have a uh, uh, Bakuto who um, showed up in Iron fist um yeah. as one of the members of the hand and and then another one that i don't think we've ever seen uh, uh Suwande. um so these are kind of like these are the members of the hand and uh alexandra re- reveals that she kind of has her little like pet that's working for her which is her revived uh electra the black sky who's the the black sky, black sky. Yes. which which honestly again if you watch daredevil season two this isn't gonna be a surprise to you because again this is stuff that was set up in daredevil season two that Electra was the black sky and that she was the ultimate weapon for the hand and the mm-hmm. and you know at the end she's dead but you see the hand so take take her body you know and they're they put it in like this casket thing and who the hell knows what they're doing well well we find out what they were doing this season they were resurrecting her so that she could finally be the black sky for them the big twist and to, this to, is to where her I being would, resurrected and this is why I, this is why I would say Daredevil Two is required watching before this because yeah. a lot of that I don't I don't think a lot of that isn't like isn't like really explained much in Defenders mm-hmm. like they they literally just say like she's the Black Sky and we resurrected you but there there's no context for that within the Defenders itself. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And also, but, um, no context for like Matt's, you know, like affection or attachment to her either. Yeah. Or, or her relationship with Stick, which I think becomes kind of important later on too. Yeah. It do- yeah. It does definitely. But yeah, so, so the hand is made up of these five people. Electra's kind of their pet, or Alexandra's pet in particular, that she's kind of using almost as leverage against the other members. What it turns out that's the, the one kind of interesting wrinkle they throw in here about Electra and the, and the hand is that, um, not ev- everybody else except Alexandra is not happy about Electra's existence in the hand. And the reason for that is because they basically used up all of their resources to resurrect Electra. Right. Like ev- the, the resources that keep them alive were all used up. So now they're basically, they're not immortal anymore. Until they can secure more resources, they're, they're no longer have the ability to keep coming back. 
um, it's going to run out because they've used up the resources. Right, they've used up the resources. So, so we know we know uh, um, Alexandra. She she's dying of, of some effect with this. She she needs a lot more of the resources than they had anyways. She needs to um, escalate their plans. Yeah. So basically, um, they, or she, basically uh, they need to they need to get get into Kunlun to get more of the substance that keeps <laughs> them alive. Um, and to do that. They need they need Danny Rand. They need the Iron Fist because because the entrance to Kun Moon, which is apparently in New York, um, you know, it is 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 blocked by this magical barrier, this magical door that only an Iron Fist can open by literally punching it with his glowing fist. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's the only turning way turning to- Danny Rand into the MacGuffin of the series. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so, so, so they, so they need that. So they're really focused on finding Danny Rand and opening that door and getting that, that good, good immortality juice. And also, <laughs> and also there, it also has a side effect of them harvesting that stuff will destroy New York City, but mm-hmm. they don't care. They, yeah. 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 Cities fall every day. This is yeah. kind of like their attitude. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Massive cities like New York, they crumble to dust every day. It's no big deal. <laughs> it's no big deal. Um, yeah, so so that's kind of like their position. They don't want to destroy the city just to destroy the city. They want to do something that will cause the city to be destroyed. Right. Um, it, as a side it's effect. Not their, it's not their goal. It's a side effect. It's just that they, they don't give a shit if they destroy the city doing this. You know, yeah. they, they see it as like, well, if that's what has to happen, as long as I get my immortality, you know. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And, uh, the other thing we kind of learn about the hand is that, that they were all residents of Kunlun themselves. Right. We learned that they were, they were residents of Kunlun. Um, but you know, they strayed from the teachings and you know, the whole tenant of Kunlun was, was they, they got those abilities, but they, but you couldn't use them for, per, for selfish reasons, for personal gain. And they kind of like decided, well, why not? You know, I, <laughs> I we 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 I'm think, being selfish. Yeah, I love being <laughs> selfish. I, I yeah, they were basically like, well, we we think we should use use the stuff for ourselves because why not? And you know, so they got kicked out of Kunlun for be for being heretics, and they formed the hand to take to take over Kunlun, and you know, and and lord over all the immortality juice, and be you know, and and just and just basically do whatever they want with their you know immortality in their building. I, it gets pretty vague around that point really like i don't yeah, think it's, i don't think it's, the it's expl- not great yeah it's not great it's not explained very well you tell i was struggling to explain it because i'm like it, it's not explained that well in the show either <laughs> so you have electra as kind of this wild card that cost them the resources they had and has escalated their plans forward uh you have these members of the hand that were all part of uh, originally from kunlun and now they're they're trying not necessarily to get back to kunlun but in order to well, like, I guess four of them really want to go back to Kunlun, and only really Alexandra just wants to get the resources. Yeah, Alexandra The rest want to return home. Yeah, the rest want to return home because they, they, they still see Kunlun as, like, their rightful home. Yeah, and they just need the resources to stay alive long enough that they can do that. Right. Well, Alexandra's goal is, is purely on self-preservation um, because she's dying. So right. these are kind of like the, the, the elements you have going Going into that, that brings us to Electra. She's she seems to have returned without really her memories or personality from before, and right. so she's just kind of like operating exactly as they as it said in Daredevil season two is like the ultimate weapon of the hand. And right. So she's just kind of going up and kicking ass and she killing kind of people. Mindless. This changes though because Electra slowly gets her memories back. She gets her personality back. You know, she 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 basically becomes whole again. 
Through various encounters with, with Matt. Through various encounters with Matt. Um, Alexandra. Kind of reminds me of, uh, um, of Winter Soldier with like Bucky. Yes. Um, where, where like, you know, Steve would like, like when he first saw him and he called him Bucky. And then that was like the first moment of doubt you saw in, uh, the Winter Soldier where he was like, but who's Bucky? Know, and then yeah. later on, like he had this, like something was wrong. Like he wasn't. But quite... it wasn't with Electra. It's not like, it, it's not like, oh, I'm, I've been brainwashed. I, I'm, I'm good now. No, it, it, with Electra, it's more like, oh, I realize exactly who I am, and I'm evil. I'm just going to be evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she ends up just killing Alexandra and taking over the hand. Yeah, she ends up just killing her. <laughs> and part of the reason for that is because Alexandra convinces her that even though she brought her back to life, she, she's still dying, and that Electra mm-hmm. needs the immortality serum or you or whatever the hell it is. Again, they don't even bother to explain exactly what it is. It's... They make it well, sound they do. Like it, it's, they it's make it like, sound like it's oil because they have to harvest it out of the out of the ground or something, like causing earth. No, it's, it's out of the it's out of the bones of the dragon. Yeah, it's out of the bone. I, so again, it sounds like oil. Oil's made out of the bones of you know yeah. old Except dead it's dinosaurs. Not, it's not just there. It's like they actually have to like like right. extract it from the bones versus just uh, and and because they're doing it that way, it's it's like they're desecrating the corpse, which is something that. Danny later kind of takes offense to but the uh, point on the here whole is thing. But... Alexander convinces Electra that she needs that too. And once mm-hmm. Electra realizes that, then 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 you see the her full heel turn to where she just turns on Alexandra yeah. because at this point now she's all about self preservation. Mm-hmm. Which is her primary she's, goal. She's still a little bit struggling with her feelings for Matt, but she's she's taking a hard line, which is kind of Electra like in the sense, you know, like it it is kind of a return of her of her personality in a sense, in which that even if she's having doubt, she's still ruthless. Right. Exactly. Um, so I guess we should transition here and talk a little bit about Stick and the Chaste. Yes. Because we saw a bunch of dead bodies early on. That's what these well, boys you know, from, the, from Luke's the, hood were the being The guy in like. the beginning is a, who was fighting Electra at the very beginning was a member mm-hmm. of the Chaste. You know? Yeah. And, and we'd seen these guys that were, were Luke and, and, uh, um, Danny met up. That was like a bunch of bodies of the Chaste that were all killed mm-hmm. by Electra. Yeah. By Electra, yep. We we find out that uh, um, from Stick that that he's the well, last. Well, we find out the- that the the kids that Luke Cage was, you know, trying to save, you know, the, the shady they were cleaning up the bodies. They were cleaning up the bodies. They were cleaning up the bodies. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they, they were, were doing. They're, they're basically the mafia cleaners for the hand. <laughs> yeah. So we learn from Stick that he's he's the last of the chase. All the rest of the chase are dead, which is a little disappointing. I feel because there is like that one scene in Daredevil season one where like where Stick was reporting to this guy that was like this hulking guy with like that you just kind of saw from behind or something. And it was it was like interesting. It was like oh wow, there's like this kind of mystical figure that Stick's tied to. It's like, no, just scrap it all. Right. The chase was just, just like a bunch of faceless people that nobody cares about except Stick, and now they're gone. <laughs> and so is Stick, because Electra ends up killing Stick. She shows up and, and kills Stick when, when the whole group has turned on Danny and they have him tied up, because they rightfully assume, you know, if we just let Danny go free, he's going to screw up and end up giving the hand exactly what they want. So we're just going to tie him up and keep him out of the way. Unfortunately, Electra comes and, uh, is able to kind of get around, um, Luke by, like, knocking him out with, uh, gas or, um, it wasn't that. It was, uh, I'm sorry. I got this mixed up. Um, Stick had decided to kill Danny. And so he poisoned Luke. Yes. To, like, knock him out. To knock him out. And he was, and Stick was going to kill Danny because he knew that the hand, what the hand needed was Was to enact their plan with Danny. So it's like, well, we'll get rid of Danny and the hand's plan is, is gone, so he decides to do that, whereas, like, all the rest of the group had just decided to kind of, like, tie Stick Danny ty- up. Stick is always, ex- you know, Stick takes an extreme hard line, you know. <laughs> Stick ends up, like, Luke's knocked out, Stick's trying to kill Danny, Electric, Electra shows up and stops him, ends up killing Stick, and takes Danny, and now the hand has everything they need. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, Stick fucked up. <laughs> Pretty much. And Danny, of course, being an idiot, immediately, like, does exactly what they want without wanting, without actually wanting to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
And then he's pretty damn gullible. And he's like, like, you're trying to use me. I'm not going to let you use me. I'm just going to start randomly wheeling around my power and then end up hitting the exact thing you want me to. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, really, Danny? God damn. And that leads to the kind of big final battle, which ends up with... Well, we're in the, they're in that building, the tower, where, you know, the hole is, and they decide the big plan is they're going to blow it up and kill the hand once and for all. But they want to go down and rescue... Well, they uh, want to rescue uh, Danny first, yeah. Yeah. And so they go down to rescue him. Um, basically, the end result is that the three of them get away. Luke, Jessica, and um, Danny. Matt stays behind because he's still trying to reach Electra, Which is like a fool's errand. Because, <laughs> you know, Electra, like, like he is naively under the impression that she, that Electra is 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 still brainwashed by the hand, or that she fully like 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 I don't think at that point he fully he comprehends that Electra is fully cognizant of herself and everything, and that what she's doing now is just because this is this is what she's choosing to do. Yeah. So, but even still, he he manages to kind of reach her at the last moment, but they're still kind of... Right. <laughs> they basically get the whole building dropped on top of the entire hand. So, like, hand storyline seems to be over. They're, like, trapped under there. Well, we see Madame Gao escape. She runs away in the middle of... In the middle we don't of see her get out of there. We just see her run away. <laughs> the, the, the implication was that she escaped. <laughs> like, she's seen more of her, yeah. but... But yeah, so that's that's kind of how things come to an end. In the in the course of this whole thing with the building coming down, uh in a fight with Bakudo, um chops off Misty Knight's arm. Yeah. Which in the comic books means that Misty Knight's gonna get her cybernetic arm. <laughs> they already showed a scene from uh, Luke Cage season two where she has it. So yeah. So she's yeah. gonna get that arm now. We also get a scene at the very end where we see that Matt is in a hospital bed with yeah, uh, some nuns around, around him. Dead at this point, by the way. Yeah. And when he wakes up or starts waking up, the nun calls for them to bring a certain woman to him, a woman who shares the first name with Matt's mother, who disappeared, by the way. <laughs> right. So yeah. there's an implication in that as well. That's kind of how the series went. Do you have any kind of like favorite or least favorite scenes or aspects from the series? Uh, least favorite aspect, uh, Danny Rand. <laughs> favorite aspect. I'd say least uh, favorite aspect for me is just the plot in general is just really Favorite weak. aspect. Yeah. The plot is weak. Uh, the, the motivation of the hand is like really weak, you know? Re yeah. Really, they, they were never really interested. Really, yeah. They were never interested. They're really vague at times. You know, their, their only plot was we want immortality and oh and that's going to incidentally destroy New York. It's mm -hmm. not really a strong motivation, you know. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah, so so the overall plot was pretty weak. Um one of my favorite just anytime Daredevil and Jessica Jones like interacted. <laughs> like Yeah, so the like, character interactions were kind of like I think the character well, we interactions kind of expected like, to be the best the part main I think. reason to watch this because yeah. that's where the, that that's where the most fun has had just seeing how these characters interact with each other particularly the three besides Danny <laughs> although although Danny did have some funny interactions with like Luke and Jessica yeah he did <laughs> I like I like Jessica dealing with Danny because she's just like not putting up with his shit at all <laughs> Jessica Jessica's great in this like Jessica Jones is easily easily like my favorite character in the Netflix Marvel universe yeah I'd agree like Kristen <laughs> Kristen Ritter is just like just put spot on with the performance performance. Definitely. I, I that I that's why that's a big part of why Jessica Jones is my favorite of all of the shows. And it's also uh was my, you know, favorite character in this as well. So continues to be. I just like how blunt and, and uh brutal she can be <laughs> to people. And right. uh, how she can just doesn't put up with shit and just tear stuff down like right away. It just makes her like fun to watch. What was your overall take of the series? Overall take, I enjoyed it. It was weak. It was weaker than, you know, I hoped it would be, but like the character interaction saved it. You know, uh, it moved at a brisk pace. So you can't, you can't say like it didn't linger on any, any one scene or part, you know, to, to the point where, you know, you were bored. 
And you know, like uh, they had so it it had a lot of good action scenes. They had some decent action in it. Um, so overall, I liked it. I I would give it a B for myself. I I really dug the series in some ways, but in other ways, I kind of it, it kind of pointed out to me like the flaws of all of the characters. And and I don't mean that like in a good storytelling way, like a flawed character. I mean that like in a way of like these are kind of like annoyances I have with the characters, or yeah. things that make them kind of like unrelatable, are kind of like put in 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 in, in bold spotlight in this show by by the series. Yeah, so it's it's not so much a fault of the series itself as it is of like it, by bringing everything together, you kind of start to see where certain things didn't work as well. So I had a little bit of an issue with that. And yeah, I mean, besides that, like I said, the the plot itself, the hand is kind of weak and uninteresting. I'm kind of glad that it seems like they're focusing on something else for going forward with the story. Yeah, definitely. It's it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's just, it wasn't working as well as I think that they had originally planned or, you know, like, I think the hand was more interesting when they were like this vague element of like uh, Daredevil season one. And uh, yeah, yeah, they were definitely more interesting. Even, even in season two. I think the hand started becoming less interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It, the, the more we learned. And it's a shame because, you know, they're supposed to be like this cool shadow organization of ninjas. And but that's kind of like how ninjas are, though. It's like the the deeper you get into them, the less interesting they become. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's, they're cooler when they're more mysterious. You know, like uh, um, it's it's the it's the metachlorian effect. Right. It's, you know, right. like the force was really interesting and and then they explained it. <laughs> yeah. George Lucas should never explain the force. You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a, it's a similar thing here where like the hand I think was ruined by too much information about it. So I'm kind of glad that it looks like they're kind of moving on from that. I, I did like the interactions between characters like we had mentioned before, um, particularly with like Jessica Jones. Besides discovering some more issues that I had with, with Matt's character. I still really liked him in The Defenders. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I kind of wish we'd had more interaction with the side characters as well, you know, because, I mean, some of them would just seem like they'd show up and then they'd just disappear. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like That's Trish Walker cool. and, and, uh, and and Foggy just kind of both seem to kind of pop in and then disappear. <laughs> Foggy, Foggy showed up fairly regularly throughout the episodes, I thought. Trish Walker seemed to really disappear. She She was, like, in one episode and then, like... Again, you know, like, like then episodes later, she showed up again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay. Hi again. <laughs> and this can bring us to, to transition to talk about the state of the Marvel Netflix universe, which I think is a, on a little bit of a downward trend. It is uh, on a little bit downward trend. Unfortunately, Jessica Jones season two is going to redeem it. Hopefully. <laughs> no. The, hopefully. Thing, the thing is, I think a lot of what made Jessica Jones season one so good was how personal the story is. And That's the true. character that we tied to Jessica in that way is gone so yeah but we don't know we don't we don't know i mean they could do something spectacular and and really fascinating but just right now it's just i don't know like i i think that you know daredevil season one was really good daredevil season two was like a weird mixed bag where it could be like really good like even better than daredevil season one at times it was like they wanted to do the punisher but they also like had to do all the setup for the defenders yeah so yeah it was kind of weird in that aspect because the whole, all the stuff with Electra in the hand was for the benefit of this show, really mm-hmm. more than the benefit of Daredevil itself. I feel like, yeah, and and then you know, Luke Cage, I think started out really good, and then just completely crumbled upon itself. In, oh in yeah, the end. What, once Cottonmouth like died, then yeah. then it 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 was downhill from there. Yeah. But they really should have stuck with Cottonmouth as the villain for the whole season, I think. Because I think even before he died, I think they they escalated like, his path to true villainy like yeah. much too quickly. They did. I, I think that if they, well, if yeah, they had they, played that out through the whole season... They escalated that really because fascinating. they knew they were going to kill him off halfway through the season. Yeah. So yeah. Which is but, unfortunate because like, he was a really interesting character and then they made him kind of, of two-dimensional. Then and they reminded us of how interesting he was before they made him two-dimensional and then killed him. And then, and then yeah, brought they made him so many, way more two-dimensional. <laughs> 
cartoonishly two dimensional. You know, like there was nothing yeah. interesting about Diamondback. Holy cow, he yeah. was a whole cartoon character. Yeah, so it's a shame. Yeah, like it, it, it's like they took it all everything that they built up, they wrecked it. They kind of had one moment to kind of remind you of what was great before, and then they wrecked it way further. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Luke Cage was kind of disappointing in that regard. I mean, we've already kind of hit on Iron Fist enough for a lifetime, I think. Yeah. To talk I, about where Iron that Fist was problematic for us. Like it, like if I if I was making Iron Fist, I would definitely like like you know like emulated like seventies kung fu films, you know, like that style really played it up. There are two things they needed to do with Iron Fist, and they didn't do either. Yeah. One is that, is that they needed to make him believably look like the most badass martial artist ever. Exactly. Which they, they it didn't needed, do. It needed personality, really. It needed... Yeah, it needed and that's the other thing. They needed... Danny had to have personality. He had to be witty, and, and Not they didn't do that either. Danny, but, like, the show itself. The show itself, like, yeah. Danny, and that, you know, it it's so self-serious... Mm-hmm. And it, it's play it's played like this straight drama, and I don't think they should have played it like that. What they should have done is they should have said, "What if Spider Man was like a crazy martial artist, but had no spider abilities, exactly. but was also rich?" <laughs> and what if we gave it like a seventies like kung fu vibe? You know, like really played it up. Um, you know, like, just like, you know, really spice it up. Imagine if, like, Spider-Man Homecoming was played yeah. as just a straight drama. They really dropped the ball in Iron Fist. Defenders was an uptick from Iron Fist, but it was still... <sighs> I don't know. It's weird. It's like, I kind of wish that all of these shows went with the episode range that the Defenders had. Like, I think eight episodes is enough for all of these shows. Yeah. And I think they'd all be better for it to have only eight episode seasons. If there was. But at the same time, it's like, maybe Defenders should have been the longer one. No. Because we needed more moments of character and development and story. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think eight episodes was fine. I, I only see bad things. Well, they didn't really make good use of their eight episodes for plotting yeah exactly well they did it and i don't think they would have made good use of 13 either it would just mean that's ending, true you know i think that's true. but i i just kind of like i it's odd that like trying to do too much with the story and failing is what is the, the reason why i'd look at all of the other ones and think <laughs> this is why they need less episodes and then not having enough story is was kind of like the problem with Defenders. or like not enough character and story. Right, right. So it does feel like I it just say, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm I, sure some way that turned out better. Yeah, definitely. I think I think tighter writing kind of evened it out by itself. I kind of <laughs> hope that like I think it might be better if they don't even necessarily do a second Defender season and instead do what kind of Marvel is is kind of leaning towards now, which is like the idea of like crossing over all the characters through all the shows right you know, like i think that's more interesting it's like it's hard to say like i want danny rand to be more involved in luke cage i want like the danny rand that i wanted to be iron fist to be more involved with <laughs> luke cage so let's talk <laughs> Not about when we got <laughs> so let's talk about the punisher that's coming up pretty the fast punisher, the punisher is coming up that's he was like, speculated november now he was easily the best part of daredevil season two um yeah you know just 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 totally impressive what do you expect you know so obviously we're happy he's getting his own show mm-hmm. what do you expect from that like excited do, do you think they'll bungle it do you, do you think they'll 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 find a way to make it boring or silly or I'm curious. I think that, uh, the fact that they, that they brought in Karen Page in such a strong, or not Karen Page, uh, um, yeah, Karen yeah, Page Karen in, in such yeah. a strong role in, for the series that she's going to be playing such a big well, part they, in this series. Well, it well. makes sense. They, they went to great lengths to establish a yeah. relationship between those two characters in Daredevil season two. The, the downside, I think, is that they're going to go to introspective yeah. on it, which I don't think is, I don't think that's the right tact for Punisher. When is Punisher ever introspective? Uh. Like in the comics. <laughs> when, when you ever see like yeah, any panels of him like philosophy? about like 
oh, this is who I am. Is this right or is this wrong? Am I a psychopath? Yeah. The, that dialogue never appears in the Punisher comic. <laughs> any, any, introspection, any, any introspection should be very subtle. Yeah. And I think that that's going to be kind of blown out a little bit by making Karen Page kind of more of a central thing because she's very demanding in that way. Her I, character I, is very I think, I think, I, I, think I think Karen Page is going to be a stand-in for the audience. She's going to be like, you know, you're not going to get much introspection or you know thought for the punisher himself about what he's doing or why he's doing it or whether that's good or bad all that stuff is going to come from karen page she's going to be the one i do like questioning to the audience is I, I, is the punisher a bad guy yeah you know? I, I do like the kind of angle that we're seeing with the trailer and, and with the different things of, of like we're seeing all these kind of like government redacted files and stuff like that i like that angle for the punisher that they're not just going to try to make it that he's this vigilante you know like there's probably going to be some aspect of organized crime in there um, right. as well that he's connected to but it looks like they're playing heavily into like government conspiracy angle and stuff and I think that works better for the fun. Well you know you know in the comics he was a Vietnam war veteran um, and here he's like an Afghanistan war veteran. Yeah exactly so 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 they'll probably play up that angle yeah with the government conspiracy stuff. That seems to be what they're doing when you watch like the trailer just like the way they were constantly showing these redacted government files and stuff. I think that's really interesting. So I think if they if they kind of focus more in that direction and they don't get too lost in the introspect in introspection with with Karen Page's character and stuff, and they don't get too stuck in that way, and if they don't fall into the same trap that pretty much all of them do, which is that the series runs too long and then starts to get convoluted by the end, right? If it can avoid that trap, then it should be really good. I I, I have like high hopes, but I'm, I'm a little bit cautious because I think Marvel Netflix started with a bang and then kind of. Started started to whimper off of it and yeah. i'm kind of hoping it comes back i'm hopefully i'm hoping it comes back too yeah definitely so i have i have high hopes for the fun nice but i i think that's pretty much it for our discussion this week that is yeah. next next week we are going to be talking about the tick the first half of season one which is what's what's available on amazon right now it's like six episodes i believe half hour episode so if you want to listen to us talk about that catch up on that um those episodes are available to amazon prime subscribers but until then uh here's what we have coming up in the next week week or today if you're listening to the podcast well, on Friday which is when it'll be available American Vandal uh, comes to Netflix it's kind of like a mockumentary making fun of the all the true crime documentary stuff that's been going on like to make a murder and stuff and then on Sunday September 17th uh, the primetime Emmy Awards air on CBS and Vice Principals comes back to HBO that's when we really dug when it was on for its first season right yeah totally so I'm, I'm excited to see um, the chemistry between those two characters again, particularly Walton Goggins. So. <laughs> then on uh, Monday, September 18th, 2017, The State comes to National Geographic. Uh, this isn't the sketch show that I loved as a child on MTV. <laughs> so... This is about ISIS. It's a it's a drama about ISIS. So that's uh, going to be September 18th. On Tuesday, September 19th, Conan Without Borders Israel airs on TBS. Conan's been doing these kind of specials where he goes to different places. He went to like Korea and he went to Cuba and, and now he's doing one in Israel. So they've usually been pretty funny. So that's like a primetime special. Yeah. And on Wednesday, September 20th, 2017, The Good Place returns to NBC. This is one of the funniest new comedies of the last year. I have a lot. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's, it's on, um, I think it's on. Netflix now. Oh, good okay, place. Cool. It's really funny. It's really good. It's really well done. And it has one of the best twists in the end that I've, I've seen like all year. Oh, okay. So now you got me interested. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's Kristen Bell. Oh, well, yeah. That's, that's true. Too. <laughs> <laughs> then on uh, that same day, Channel Zero No End House comes to sci fi. Channel Zero is the creepy pastas anthology series where each season's like a separate story uh last year they did candle cove and now they're doing no end house i really liked candle cove i thought it had like it felt a lot like a like an old stephen king book like it or something right along those lines it really kind of had that feel um i i really don't know anything about no end house like i didn't know anything about candle cove going into this so i don't know it, it's an anthology series so it could be completely outside of that style i just don't know right totally but that's coming 
come into sci-fi. So if you're interested in that or creepypasta in general, check that out. Then on Thursday, September 21st, 2017, a bunch of villains are going to show up on TV as Gotham comes back to Fox. Yay. <laughs> it's it's Kid Bruce Wayne versus 59,000 villains from the comics. Oh, jeez. <laughs> they just kept, I mean, that was, I think we both fell off of that series. And it was, for me, it was just every character ended up being like the secret identity of a villain from the comics. Yeah, it, yeah it, it's ridiculous at this point. It's like really <laughs> ridiculous. And then next Friday, September 22nd, 2017, Transparent comes back to Amazon. Uh, Mike Judge has a new animated comedy coming to HBO called Tales from the Tour Bus. Oh, that's nice. And right. uh, Fuller House is back on Netflix, as well as a kind of like anime knockoff thing in America called Neo Yokia. Oh, uh, F that crap. No. <laughs> so that's what's coming up in the week ahead. So thank you, everybody, for listening. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, as well as our site, tventhusiast.com. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can reach Will. He's at Voxel Hero. You can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to theweeklyset at tventhusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set Podcast for more content.